Hello, broadcasters. Welcome to episode 217 of the StreamYard Live Town Hall. Uh, my name's Gage. I'm here with Dan, of course. Dan, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm always thinking when the intro is playing that at some point we're actually going to remove it and everyone's going to see me dancing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. Maybe uh, I should surprise you once and just like stop uh. it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, yeah, it's been a good week for, uh, for for me. I'm super excited about the show uh, tonight. We have a sneak preview for you on an upcoming feature, which I think you all will be pretty uh, excited about. And we also have a special guest uh, from the support team. So lots of fun uh, stuff. Uh, if it's your first time here, uh, Dan and I are the founders of StreamYard, and we do these town halls uh, every single Sunday at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific. Uh, we do them for a few reasons. One is to stay in tune with all of you, go through the same flow uh, that you all do during your own shows and productions. Uh, two is to answer uh, any of uh, your questions. That's why we're calling it Ask StreamYard. So if there's anything you'd like us to touch on uh, tonight, feel free to leave it in the chat. We'll do our best to get to as many uh, as we as we possibly can. And then I always mention the three pillars of StreamYard, which are ease of use, stability, and professional stream. So if you're about those three things, StreamYard is the tool for you. See people tuning in uh, from all over the world tonight. I think I saw Japan, which is really cool. First time, maybe not first time ever, but first time in a while that I've seen uh, Japan. Uh, before I forget, we have lots of awesome shows at StreamYard. So we've got YouTube channel reviews with Dee and Daniel the second Saturday of every month. Really great show if you're looking to specifically grow on YouTube. They give lots of specific actionable feedback when it comes to things like, you know, how you should be thinking about your analytics and your, your audience and, and thumbnails for your videos. Um, they're both pros uh, with everything video, but especially YouTube. So definitely check that out. And then we have Enhance Your Live Streams the last Tuesday of every month with Nick Nimmin. Again, Nick is a uh, pro with, with all things live streaming, all things video. So come there with your live streaming questions. Um, uh, and then one thing we've been doing at the start of these so that uh, you get to know a little bit more about us, we get to know a little bit more about you, is a fun fact. Uh, the fun fact we had for tonight was uh, kind of a random one, but I think it's interesting. <laughs> Do you speak another language? And if you don't speak another language, which one would you like, if you could wave a wand, which one would you uh, be able to speak or would you learn on your, your own? What about you, Dan? Cool. Yeah, so I do not speak another language. They don't they never push that too hard in Canada. I found at least the part of Canada that I'm at. If I could learn another language, I think I would pick I think I'd pick Portuguese, to be honest. Portuguese? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the StreamYard audience definitely speaks Portuguese, so that would be a cool uh cool one. Yeah. Um maybe. I also do not speak another language, at least not well enough to actually say I speak another language. Maybe if little you bits and pieces in spanish i can i can understand yeah. a little a little bit of it um but yeah if i could wave a wand i think um i probably would do spanish just because i feel like of the encounters that i've had in my life that's probably the one that i would have actually been able to use the most time so yep. i think it would be that one that's fair awesome so before getting into the preview let's do a couple questions uh here so i saw one from um from Tim Blankership says, uh, lately during live streams, I've had the Wi-Fi signal come up saying there's been a disruption. Um, I am plugged into the router and have good speeds. Any advice? So with that, Tim, the uh, I, yeah, there's a signal in StreamYard, which basically means that not all of the information that you're sending is actually getting to StreamYard. Um, if you're not plugged in, that would generally be the first thing I'd recommend. But if you're already plugged in, um, Sometimes it could be like a really old router or something like that. So I would try restarting the router. And if it is a really old one, I'd consider replacing it. Um, and then I'd also reach out to support and they could sort of do live troubleshooting with you and go through all the steps to see what it what it could be. Yeah, there's a number of things it could be. Like if your device is a little slower or if you're using a ton of features that are a bit heavier. So like screen sharing, virtual backgrounds, local recording, stuff like that are a bit heavier. So if you're using a bunch of those, it can kind of add up, especially if your device isn't the most powerful. Yeah, there's, there's a few things. Router is probably the most common besides not being plugged in in the first place. Cool. Uh, Studio says, I tried moving the brands up and wondered if there's a way to move them. Moving the brands up. So there's lots of stuff within the brand tab that you are able to, to move, Studio. So like when it comes to things like your overlays and video clips, you can just drag and drop the order of, of those. If you mean the actual brand folders... I believe, I don't believe you can actually move those, but that would. Yeah, if you can confirm if that's what you mean, like, you know, say you have five separate brands, are you meaning you wish you could order the list of those brands? That'd be good to know. Only way I could think of to do that now is obviously if you delete one of them and kind of recreate the whole thing somewhere else on the list. 
not super convenient, but yeah, let us know if we're understanding that correctly. Cool. Um, Andy says, how do I add another uh, Facebook account? Uh, I was only able to link up my dummy account used to manage my fan page. Uh, please help. Um, so Andy, if you just go to streamer.com and you're logged in, if you just click destinations, you'll see the option to connect a page, a profile, a, a group. And if you just select the Facebook page option, it'll walk you through step by step. Um, it's pretty simple. Like you'll, just, you'll have to make sure you're logged in the right Facebook account as you go through the flow. Um, but it sort of takes, takes you through every step of the, the process. And if you have any issues with issues doing that, um, we, we do have 24 seven live chat at streamer.com slash contact. Yeah, there are some prompts along the way too. So if you try to connect a page, for example, and you don't see your page listed, we do have a link you can click right in line there that'll kind of explain why you might not see it. Like Gage said, it could be you're logged into the wrong account. It could be you didn't grant permission to it. Maybe you don't have publisher permission to that page. There's a whole bunch of stuff it could be. Yeah, our live chat can also kind of walk walk through that with you. Awesome. Uh, Rebel says, please change the padding of the red box around the timer so that it doesn't jump based on the width of the numbers. What what are thoughts on that? I believe it's a live timer. Okay, yeah, I see, I see. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we, we could maybe adjust it a little bit so that it only jumps every time a new digit is added. And I'm guessing maybe you're hovering on the viewer count or something and it's shifting a little bit and that's why you want to change it. Yeah, good to know. Cool. Thanks, Rebel. Uh, all right. There's lots of other questions here, but let's get into the preview really quick and then we'll go back to, to questions. So um, super excited about this one. We want to give you a sneak peek of guest destinations. So you can probably guess just based on the name what this actually is, but um, lots of you've asked for it in the past. So basically, this is just the ability that if you do have a guest that you've invited into your broadcast and say you're streaming on YouTube and Facebook, but you'd think it'd be cool for them to share it out to maybe their LinkedIn audience or something like that. This basically allows you to prompt your, your guests to add their own destinations um, as part of your, your upcoming uh, live stream. Anything else to add to that one, Dan? Yeah, I guess like Gage just said, this is we just wanted to give you guys a sense of something that's coming soon. So we won't walk in, we won't go into too much detail. I think maybe next week we'll actually show a video and kind of show it off. It won't be rolling out until at least a week from now. But yeah, we sometimes like just telling you guys about upcoming cool things just to get some feedback. But yeah, basically the whole point is here is your guests will be able to stream to some of their destinations if you want them to. So it is optional. By default, it's off, but you can turn it on and then your guests can start to share the broadcast to their destinations. What obviously is beneficial for your guests because it's more content for them, but it can also be beneficial for you because then you're also getting more views as well. Awesome. Um, so yeah, if any of you have any feedback or questions on guest destinations, definitely let us uh, know. I think it's um, probably pretty self-explanatory, but how uh, in terms of how it works. But if uh, if there's anything that's unclear, definitely let us know. We'd be happy to walk you through it. Cool. And yeah, we'll go into a lot more detail next week, like I mentioned. I think yeah, I think next week probably. All right. Let's see what else uh, we had here. Uh, Kale says, uh, will StreamYard include any analytics features like TubeBuddy to the StreamYard platform in the future? Uh, so analytics has, has definitely come up in the past. And I think there's definitely some cool stuff we can add for analytics, at least the basic stuff when it comes to like, you know, how many people watched and at what periods of time did I have like the highest number of viewers, et, et cetera. Uh, but if there's anything specifically, Kale, that you think would be useful beyond sort of the basic stuff for StreamYard to add when it comes to analytics, definitely let us know. Um, I think TubeBuddy, VidIQ, those tools are 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 great. I, I don't think I think a lot of their value is like the fact that it's like an extension and it's all and it's like on top of YouTube. Like Streamer is definitely not gonna add all of that, like the the level of in-depth analytics that they have when it comes to like finding um, you know, topics that are trending and stuff like that on YouTube. At least at least I don't think anytime soon. Um but yeah, any other thoughts on that one, Dan? No, I don't think so. But yeah, if there's anything specifically, Kale, with analytics that you do think would be cool for streamer to have, please do let us know. Uh, Kevin says, it's a good question. Will guest destinations count against your destinations? So no, right, Dan? No, so they're treated separate. So we will have some kind of limit on how many guest destinations there can be and maybe how many per person. But they'll be kind of separate. So I want to figure it'd be kind of confusing. But it's like you can stream to three in total, including yours and your guests. So if you're streaming to three, your guests could also still stream to a destination. Well, cool. Um, 
budgeting just because says, can you add sound effects, i.e. applause, cheering, booing, etc.? So we did add the background music feature uh, budgeting. It's more designed for background music. So something that's just going to be playing subtly in the background, but you can technically upload anything you want. Like you will do it again for this giveaway so you can see. Uh, but for some of the past giveaways, we've done like that drum roll that I've played while we do the, the giveaway. So you technically can use it for sound effects as well. I don't know if we've, we've explored or we're at least considering adding some sound effects and we've done some research on that. So I'm not sure if we will be adding them or not some built in ones, but we'll see. But yeah, like Gabe said, you can, if you have a track you want to add, you can always upload it yourself for now. Cool. Uh, Steven says, is it possible to have a hot key for switching between hosts and guests? You want to take that one down? Hmm. I'm trying to think if you could pull that off in some other way. So yeah, right now, I don't think there is a way to achieve that as you're probably familiar with if you're asking the question already. But yeah, I think I would like to add more hotkeys in general. So I'd love us to have hotkeys for several different things we don't have now, like controlling overlays, that sort of stuff. And I think part of it could be maybe switching guests. We need to think about exactly how it would work. And even as I'm giving this answer, I'm continually thinking just, is there a way to do this now? But yeah, there, there, as far as I know, there's not really a way to do it other than you can kind of, if you're like very tech savvy, you can kind of select the button with your keyboard and then press space to click it at some point. I've done that a few times in rare cases, but it's not like a nice hotkey solution by any means. So yeah, maybe in the future at some point. Yeah, and yeah, we will be adding more types of hotkeys, Steven. So stuff like that is good to know. Yep. Um, Asakura says, uh, why can't I pin the invite to join a panel in StreamYard like people can from YouTube side, I have to constantly post the link in chat. So I don't know if I fully understand the question, Asakura, so if I'm missing something, definitely let, let me know. But you should be able to, like any other comment on YouTube, if you post if you, if you you post the link, you should be able on, 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 maybe that's your question. On YouTube side itself, you can pin the comment that, you, that has the StreamYard link, but you can't do that within the StreamYard studio uh, itself. Um, it's something that we'd definitely like to add. I think the only reason we don't have it right now, Dan, is just that the uh, YouTube API doesn't actually allow that at this point. Right? I'd have to check again. Yeah, I don't think they allow that. But yeah, if you can let us know as well, if that's what you're referring to, is it the ability to pin YouTube comments from within the studio or something else? Cool. YouTube is always making improvements to the API, though, so hopefully in the future that is something that we can enable. All right. Uh, let's see what else we had here. Uh, Annie says, could a layout be added where there is uh, a small lower third right aligned teaser bug or window that can be used as a coming up or a next teaser? So um, so one thing, Annie, that is uh, coming in the future that I've, I've sort of hinted at a few times in the past is we are working on sort of a um, uh, a more powerful some more powerful functionality within the StreamYard Studio. It's going to be tucked away, so every, you're still going to be able to use it exactly as you do today. Uh, but for folks that do want to go deeper and sort of customize things like layouts and where things are appearing on the screen, we are working on a really, really exciting um, sort of functionality behind the scenes that people that do want to go to that level of detail will have access to. And something like this is absolutely uh, will be possible once that's available. Um, I don't know if I'm fully understanding exactly what it looks like, though. So maybe it's something that is possible now. Like I would think that even now you would be able to do this with just using a transparent overlay. So yeah. say for example, um, they're just Dan and I up here, but we wanted like a, something in the bottom right. That's like coming up next, like going across the screen. You could actually do that with, uh, with streamer as it is today, just using a transparent overlay. But if I'm, if I'm missing something, definitely let me, please let me know, Andy. Uh, let's see what else we had. Gary says, uh, will there be an app version for smartphone users? Right now, we have to use a web uh, browser. Um, we've definitely considered it, Gary. I'd be curious if uh, if there's if that's important to you. If, if you would like to see an app version of uh, of the application, and if the web version works well for you, we definitely want to make make it. We've always wanted to make it completely possible to use in the web. So, especially if you have a guest who may not want to actually download something to be able to join your broadcast. Um, but when it comes to sort of things like mic compatibility with and integrating with certain devices, there are some advantages to also having the option of an app. So it is definitely something we're, we're open to. Yep. Uh, let's see what else we had here. I did have a few other questions. Uh, 
for you all tonight. Um, but let me see. Chris says, how can we keep guests from seeing the private chat? So we don't have a way to stop guests from seeing the private chat now, Chris. I'd be curious to learn a little bit more about is it is it sort of the thing where you want DMs or something like that? Or do you is it really that you want to completely turn off the private chat for certain individuals? But right now the private chat is there just so people can communicate and people know what's going on. Um, but I'd be curious is, is if if it would be DMs is the type of thing that you want, or if you if it is the ability to actually limit who sees the, the private chat. Yeah, and also be curious too, is your use case that it's maybe say you and another co-host or you know admin on your account and you guys need to message each other a bunch throughout the show but you don't want creators to see it or are you like putting your own personal notes in there and it's just for yourself or something else i'm maybe not even thinking of that'd be useful to know cool um pam says uh regarding adding the additional camera slash device so i log in on both add one as a guest how do i switch the view while doing a live or recording so there's a few ways to handle multiple cameras, Pam. So um, joining as a guest is an option. The other option is on the pro plan. You do have the ability to use two different USB cameras, and that would stop. And at least when you're doing that, you don't have to you don't have to actually invite yourself in as a guest. Yep. Um, but either way, when it comes to controlling the cameras, um, it works like the same way that you have a guest. So the same way that with Dan right now, I can, for example, use the solo solo layout button to full screen him, um, or I can use the other layouts that we have here to, to sort of change the, the format that we're in. Um, you can do that exactly the same way when, you, when you've when you joined in as a, a guest. Hopefully yep. And so specifically, probably the one you want is right at the bottom where, you know, there's like the videos below the main area. There's the videos of each camera. There's a button in the top left corner of that that just looks like a single person. That's what we call the solo button. And that's like, if I click it on Gage, it'll full screen him. If I click it on me, it'll full screen me. Click it on Gage, it'll switch back. So that's how you kind of just seamlessly switch between one full screen shot and another one. You can also, if you wanted to, for example, say you had one large camera and you wanted that one to kind of be the focus and then you want to switch them, you can just click and drag and drop one camera with the other one and just switch spots very easily. And that's just on like the main video area itself. So hopefully that works for you. Awesome. Um, one of the other things that uh, we wanted to touch on, oh, we had a couple other updates for tonight. So one of those was uh, the StreamYard blog. So uh, we actually did a full refresh on the StreamYard blog. So we updated and added a ton of new articles and sort of gave it a, a facelift as well. So uh, if you're looking for more resources when it comes to um, learning specifics, and we have lots of cool category specific stuff too. So like if you're interested in learning more about live streaming as a musician or as a church, uh, there's lots of great content there. So uh, when you when you have time, definitely check out the updated blog. Um, and then uh, one more here. I think uh, Louis, if you can hear me, we'll be bringing Louis up in a minute or so. Okay, he's ready. <laughs> cool. Uh, so after after the uh, the shorts update. Um, so the other one was YouTube Shorts. So previously, uh, when using the YouTube Shorts integration with Streamyard, uh, you had to do. Uh, do you want to give the update here, Dan? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, for those of you that have tried out the new shorts integration or shorts and reels, when you're done a StreamYard, either stream or recording, you can now repurpose it, right? So you can take, say, about 45 minute recording. You can then choose to create shorts and reels from that and just create little short snippets, maybe 30 seconds, post it off to Instagram reels, Facebook reels, YouTube shorts. There was one basically difference with YouTube where a YouTube short had to be between 15 seconds and 60 seconds. And that has just changed so that it is now five seconds to 60 seconds, which is the same as the other platforms. So basically all the platforms are somewhere between five and 60 seconds for the length of a short, which is nice because I know a lot of people want to do five second shorts, 10 second shorts, all the platforms now support it. Cool. Um, and then there was another small change as well, right, Dan, where previously there were some issues when using the integration where sometimes things would get posted instead of a YouTube short would be posted as a YouTube video, but we found a workaround uh, for, for that. And now, regardless of the length and, and anything that's going on with the, uh, the video, it will always be posted as a YouTube short. There was a sm small group of folks that were having some issues with that. Yeah, I remember last week somebody had asked about that where they were saying, my short didn't get posted as a short. But yeah, that was something we basically found a way to work around, so that shouldn't be a problem. Cool, cool. Hey, Justin, nice to see you here. I hope you're doing uh, well. 
Um, cool. We have some other questions here. We'll get to those at the end, but I want to make sure we have time for our guest tonight. We've got Louie from uh, the support team. Hey, Louie, how's it going? Good. How you guys doing? What's up? Doing good. Nice to have you on here, Louie. Thank so you. for anyone, anyone who's never seen this kind of segment of the As StreamYard show, we've been bringing on team members from StreamYard basically to give you guys a chance to actually get to know them and kind of meet all the people behind the product besides just Gage and I. So yeah, we've got Louie today and we'll ask Louie some questions, but if you have questions for him and you know, feel free to ask in the chat as well. Cool. So Louie, first question for you. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and what you do at StreamYard? Yeah, so I work with uh, StreamYard's customer support. Um, so I'm mainly on the live chat that we have 24 seven and also I'm there to answer uh, emails. Usually I'm on like late afternoon to early morning on the East Coast. So if you ever need problems or you ever need help with your problems, usually you'll talk to me or someone else that's on. Cool. Yeah. yeah I imagine some people in the chat have probably met you before. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> cool. And where are you located, Louie? I'm in New York. Cool. And how long have you been at StreamYard now? Um, since March, the end of March 2021. So it's been a while, which is nice. So almost two years? Yeah, almost, yeah. Sweet. And then what's your favorite StreamYard feature? I would say uh, the pre-recorded content, like being able to upload that because then like there's not a lot of pressure when you're doing uh, your stream. You could do it before you want to go live because you might not be around at the time you actually want to go live. So I think that was a big game changer. A lot of people seem to like that in the live chat. So Cool. Sweet. I think that's the first time we've actually heard pre-recorded as a favorite feature. But yeah, that's well, I love one. that one. Cool. And then what did you want to be when you were younger? Mine's a, a classic example. I really wanted to be an astronaut. I loved okay. watching all those uh, moon landing documentaries. I I have like NASA posters in my room. I was obsessed with that stuff. So, yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, you always hear every kid wanted to do that, but then you just ask them and it's like, not that many actually did. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even try to go there. <laughs> cool. No, I meant not that many even like. I always thought a bunch, if you'd ask kids, you know, all of them would have said they wanted to be an astronaut, but I found when you actually ask, there's a few yeah. that did, but usually there's something else. But no, cool. I was I was that example, yeah. <laughs> cool. And then how did you end up, you know, getting into customer support? Um, most of the jobs I had uh, before this, I was definitely dealing with um, customers either, either over the phone or email. And uh, my jobs were usually technically oriented, like I had to know um, computer programs. So one of the people I knew, they worked at StreamYard. And uh, there was a time where you guys need to hire a lot of live chatters and uh, I was available and I had to thank God I had the right skill set and I've been here since. Cool. So, yeah. yeah. And what's your favorite thing about working at StreamYard? Definitely the people. It's a really good group of people to work with. Everybody's here, always has your back. If you need help with something or any clarification, like we're really like a, a family. We're always communicating with each other. It's like definitely the best work environment I've been in. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And then how would you answer our fun fact question today? Um, I would pick Italian. My my okay. four grandparents were all from Italy and I never got a chance to actually learn Italian. I know like some basics, but I think if you put me in Italy, I would have no idea how to get around. So I would want to know that for sure. Cool. That's fair. And do you have a favorite karaoke song? No, I run away from karaoke if it's ever happening at a party i'm like the last person to want to do it but if i were to have to pick something i like elvis a lot so i do some sort of elvis song cool yeah all right and then do you have a favorite board game yeah definitely monopoly monopoly is a lot okay of fun. it lasts long but it's good it's certainly a love hate thing i find yeah. some people get on here it's like oh yeah it has to be monopoly and then yeah quite a few it's anything except monopoly <laughs> <laughs> no i'm the monopoly guy i like that one cool do you have a specific type of monopoly i know there's like yeah thousands of variations it seems one of them is called like Mon monopoly empire towers you have to it's like brand new you have to buy all these brands that are new brands like xbox and um there was skype on there and cool. uh stuff like that you have to build up a whole tower it makes monopoly go quicker you're not sitting there for like three hours but it's yeah okay project. cool yeah that's a good thing <laughs> sweet all right yeah and if anyone like i said in the chat has any questions for Louis, feel free to ask away. Oh, you're on mute, Gage. Is that awesome? Let's go. Can we go ahead and queue up the uh, the giveaway uh, for tonight, Dan? Make sure we don't run out of time. But yeah, if you guys have any questions for Louis, definitely let us know or any other questions in uh, general. 
Uh, Juan says, is it possible to get the option to stream our pre-recorded videos to Instagram? So not yet. Um, hopefully in the future, the, the Instagram will, will open up its API to have a direct integration. There is a small percentage of folks that now have access to RTMP. So you can use the custom RTMP option if you are one of the few that have access through it that way. Um, but we did recently release that um, Reels integration, right? So fortunately, um, now after your streams are over, you can actually post directly to to, to Reels. But um, hopefully in the future, you'll also be able to do the pre-recorded videos. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, and yeah, for so for the giveaway, I think many of you are already familiar, but at the end of these, we always uh, do a giveaway. Uh, to be eligible, all you have to do is type in hashtag uh, the yard. And tonight we'll be giving away um, one of those pillows that I have in the background there and the, uh, the stream yard uh, duck. I think that was also one of Justin's questions. If it's a real background, it is uh, indeed a, a real <laughs> background, but I'm glad the uh, couch looks comfy. I'm surprised Justin didn't ask if my background is a real background. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be super funny if it wasn't. That's what you said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just go find that picture online of like the most plain, boring room. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we'll give you all, you know, 10 or 15 seconds or so to get in your hashtag the yards. And if you're ever interested in doing a giveaway like this, uh, yourself, we actually made this tool, uh, publicly available. So if you go to streamer.com slash giveaway, you can run a giveaway just like how, uh, we're doing now. Cool. All right. Probably give um, it another 30 seconds or so. All right. I'll give it a little bit, a little bit more. Um, Maybe have time for one or two more questions. Visual Stenographer says, is there a way to delay access to the webinar link to release it closer to the date of the webinar? Hmm. So currently, as soon as you create it, a link will be generated visual. But um, the way that most folks will handle that is that they just choose to not like no one's going to get notified that that link was created. Right. So even though that the link tech, even though the link technically exists, They'll just choose to share out that link at whatever date they, they feel like it's appropriate. Um, would be curious if that's not a good solution for, for, for what you're doing. But as of right now, there, there isn't actually a way to like stop it from being generated until the, the future. Um, and then we have a question from Mike asking, is, um, is it possible to have uh, clear and clear and clean sound when doing a live uh, church service? Um, uh, yes, Mike, absolutely. So if you are streaming um, like a musical performance or something like that, I probably would suggest going through an audio interface of some kind so that you can sort of control um, all the mixing and all the different devices that are you bringing that you're bringing into stream right? if you're if uh, if you're streaming music, you probably you might want something more sophisticated than like a USB microphone. Um, but there's tons of churches you, that are using StreamYard to stream out performances through uh, through an audio interface and have everything connected through through that. Yep. All right, should we go ahead and run it? Let me get the uh, the background or the uh, the background music clip since I said I would I would show it. All right, cool. ready, Dan? Do you turn down the volume? Uh, no, let me turn it down. There we go. All right, let's do it. Good luck, everyone. Procedural notes. Congrats. <laughs> I like your name. Uh, thanks so much for, uh, for hanging out with us tonight. If you could shoot an email to contact at streamyard.com, uh, we'll get you uh, set up with your brand new streamyard pillow and your streamyard uh, duck. Cool. And, uh, cool. And with that, this was uh, episode 217 of the streamyard live uh, town hall. Um, thank you all so much for, uh, for hanging out with us. Uh, we'll have you in more details about guest destinations uh, next week and lots of other fun stuff. Uh, coming soon. So you'll see you next uh, can't talk. We'll see you next week at the same time, Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific. Cool. And thanks for joining us, Louie. Yeah, thank you for having me.